Jim. This is Terry and Tiffany. Are you ready for the uh, segment now? If you can hear me, I can hear you. Yep, we can hear you. All right. Uh, so we're going to go live, and I'm going to say, ladies and gentlemen, we're very excited to welcome our next guest, Mr. Jim Pearson, who has just got done co-authoring uh, Dark Shadows Return to Collinwood with, of course, none other than Catherine Lee Scott. And uh, we're excited to have you join us on Cult Radio, not only to talk about that, but, of course, to talk about what everybody in the Dark Shadows world is buzzing about, and that is the new Dark Shadows film with the trailer that was just released this week. Welcome to the show, Jim. Well, good evening, and uh, <clears throat> definitely a lot of Dark Shadows going on, and it's uh, something that's never really gone away, but uh, for the last you know, few years, Johnny Depp and Tim Burton have been uh, working away uh, to come up with their own reimagining of Dark Shadows. They were both fans of the original series, and... Um, um, it's uh, it's going to be a big, uh, exciting, uh, uh, like I said, reimagining uh, that will be on screens in two months from now. The trailer just came out this week to give to give all the fans and the uninitiated a little glimpse of what's going to be coming up here. And uh, you know what what people uh, you know understand who've been fans for you know forty years since they were whether they were kids or or uh, Housewives or whoever watched the original show and then the reruns, uh, that this is going to be, like I said, a new Dark Shadows because Dan Curtis, who created uh, the series, I had the uh, the pleasure of working with Dan for many years, and uh, he passed away six years ago this month. But, um, you know, he, he his, his legacy includes many great genre productions for television and, and uh, film, including... Dark Shadows, Burnt Offerings, The Night Stalker, the Trilogy of Terror, and, and others. But um, he also did the great uh, World War II miniseries, War and Remembrance, and The Winds of War. But Dan always enjoyed doing uh, spooky stories, but he also had a sense of humor. And, um, you know, if you, uh, if you look at Dark Shadows, it was, you know, a gothic romance uh, that started out in the tradition of Jane Eyre and Rebecca and uh, Turn of the Screw, and Dan Curtis freely adapted from a lot of these great gothic stories that he grew up reading as a child and that have been around, you know, uh, in in many cases for a couple of centuries now. Uh, Dracula by Bram Stoker dating back to 1897, Um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, all those things. And so Dark Shadows was an amalgamation of all these wonderful, uh, you know, rich stories that were very romantic. Uh, in, in their execution, uh, as well as suspenseful, because Dan Curtis was not really a horror guy in the sense of doing gore or doing, you know, violence just for, for, you know, for, for violence sake. I mean, Dan did have the stories, uh, in his heart that really resonated with his, with his interest of, um, supernatural and of, uh, like I said, of these kind of things that he grew up with. The, uh, kind of the pulp fiction and, and, and the gothic stories. Right. But, you know, so so Dan was a wonderful storyteller. He learned how to direct when he uh, had the original Dark Shadows on the air, the daytime show from 66 to 71. Then he directed the feature films House of Dark Shadows and Night of Dark Shadows for MGM. And, of course, he was able to put a little more blood and a little more, you know, uh, uh, you know extreme uh, images in the, in the film you couldn't do on daytime television. But, you know, it was still the sympathetic vampire that really, I think, the Barnabas character becoming uh, a new type of, uh, uh, you know, vampire that made, that made the show distinctive. And it kind of set the tone for, you know, some other adaptations down the line. When Dan did Dracula in 1973 with Jack Palance, um, there was an introduction of that kind of element. Uh, although not, he wasn't made overly sympathetic. Uh, but it's something that really has resonated, you know, because when you look at vampires in, in, in film and pop culture, before Barnabas, there was really just Bella Lugosi, who was this very hideous rat-like creature, and um, and he wasn't really seen by the masses on television, you know, late-night television, uh, and then Christopher Lee with the Hammer films in the late 50s, but Barnabas really was mainstream, daytime television, ABC Network, in the, in the late 60s, when you had a huge viewership because there were only three networks and some independent channels. So Dark Shadows reached 20 million people at its peak in 1969. 
for a daytime show, which is, of course, unheard of now. Even the nighttime shows, right. you know, you'd have to be in, in, in the top ten to reach that many people. It, it definitely but, is uh, history. Uh, what I want to know is, in having the great opportunity to work with Dan Curtis, you were, you were so blessed to be able to do that because he really was a great man. Uh, in, in knowing that I'm assuming, according to the official press release, that the mo new movie is being called a gothic comedy. Yeah, and, now, here's the thing. If, if you watch Dark Shadows when we redid the show in the 1990s, um, you know, Dan Curtis, you know, showed some of his, his, uh, his, his humor. Uh, the, the character Willie Loomis, uh, you know, was given, you know, kind of a... Uh, uh, comic relief elements, and also even the Reverend Trask portrayal. Roy Finnis, you know, did, uh, he really relished playing, you know, this very sinister, uh, evil Reverend in, in the 1700s. And, and the writers injected some fun humor with, with Abigail the Witch Hunter and, and Abigail Collins and things like that. And, and there was, and there was wit to the show. So Dark Shadows, even on the original series, uh, particularly by the time it hit its stride in 1969, Violet Wells, was the, the only female writer on the series. She wrote for a year from 69 to 70 on Dark Shadows when David Selby came in as Quentin and the Gypsies were seen on the show in 1897. And, and, you know, so one can see humor that was injected even in the original series. So, you know, Dan Curtis did Dark Shadows four times in his lifetime and now, now Johnny Depp and Tim Burton are putting their spin on it and they're taking the humor definitely. Uh, the, the tone has shifted to where they're having a lot of fun with this. But it's very affectionate. It's an homage, and uh, we took four of the original actors over to do cameos in the film. Of course, Jonathan, Fred, Barnabas, and Laura Parker, Angelique, Catherine, Lee Scott, Maggie, and Josette, and then David uh, Selby as Quentin. So they're seen in the film because the you know everyone involved wanted to show that um, you know uh, you know that respect to the original performers who who made the series so special to Johnny Depp as a young boy and Tim Burton and a lot of people who are still fans today. So, you know, if you have any fans, you know, that are concerned that this new movie isn't, you know, a, a carbon copy of the old Dark Shadows, you know, it's because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a new, it's a new opportunity to bring the show and to bring the story to, to new audiences. And you're not going to top what Dan Curtis did uh, on the level of when he was there in person um, to make it, you know, this gothic romance. And that's what this movie is, and you'll see that. But then you'll also have a lot of fun fi fish-out-of-water elements where Barnabas uh, shows up, and it's 1972, and, uh, and he, you know, he's not going to have a clue what's going on in this modern world. And, of course, the old show didn't really, you know, get into any of those idiosyncrasies or those particulars. How does Barnabas, you know, understand? You see Barnabas drive a car in the, in the old show in 1969, and, well, Okay, you could say, who taught this vampire from the 1700s how to drive a Volkswagen, you know? <laughs> but, um, so, I mean, you know, there were some moments in the old show that could have played on that, but the Daily Soap had, had a different mandate. Here you're trying to do a mainstream movie uh, to appeal to people who've been rather, I would say, you know, kind of over overwhelmed with vampire stories the last few years, which I, it's ironic because Dark Shadows was the originator but in the five or six years this film has been developed, you know, it started filming uh, a year ago, but the script went through several different, you know, incarnations to get it right. And, and Johnny Depp's a busy guy in Tim Burton, so it took a while to get the thing slotted. And then they built the sets and did some incredible visuals with this thing. But, you know, I th you know people, I think, just need to, you know, anyone who feels like all oh, this, this film looks too crazy or something, you know, I think they need to take a breath and just understand this is a different Dark Shadows, but it does have the original in its heart, and there are plenty of moments in this original series that are meant, um, you know, in respect and in honor of the old show, and uh, and everyone had a great time with it. And I, I'm telling you, the original actors, uh, we went over and, and, and filmed their scenes, and, and they've seen this stuff, and Dan Curtis's two daughters, and everybody is thrilled with this. And, and, and absolutely, you know, it's, it's, it's almost a relief to know that, you know, everyone's not trying just to paint by numbers here and do exactly what Dan Curtis would have done. And, um, Dan Curtis borrowed from all these classics and made them his own. And now Tim and Johnny are doing that. Uh, Dark Shadows is a classic. Well, and, uh, uh, let me ask you, so, I you take know, it, 
Yeah. I, I saw mm-hmm. a picture of Jonathan Fritz standing next to Johnny Depp with a full blown makeup, so it wasn't that they tried to hide it from him. I take it Jonathan Fritz didn't have a problem with the new makeup? No, no, not at all. I mean, you know, Jonathan was really sweet when we introduced him to Johnny Depp, and, you know, and, and Fred was inspecting Johnny and kind of giving him like he was doing the visual approval, like, like you know, like a like a, a drill sergeant might be giving a private, you know, when he when he reports to uniform and be certain, you know, that his collar is starched and, and all that. And so Fred was really cute about it, and you know, and Johnny's really, you know, um, you know, it was like meeting your maker. And uh, and, and 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 David Selby, you know, David's a dear friend, and he he thinks it's it's a wonderful new uh, you know reinvention. Uh-huh. Laura Parker, who's Who's, Laura is such a terrific writer. She's just written a great new novel on Dark Shadows, and she's very well steeped in Gothic literature and 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 the whole and the whole uh, Dark Shadows uh, uh, you know legend. And, and and she and Captain Lee Scott as well. They're both very supportive of this film. So you know, I think you know if, if any fans are, are been out of shape that this isn't a hundred percent you know uh, uh, you know drenched in Gothic drama from start to finish. They have to understand that, you know, this is a film that is trying to put their own print on it mm-hmm. while still retaining elements that make it so special. And so um, there's a lot of humor. The tone does shift, and as the trailer clearly demonstrates that. There's some incredible dark, um, you know, dramatic uh, elements to the movie, and there's some very fun-hearted moments. There's, there's, um, some action, there's action sequences. There's romance. Um, you know, it's set in 1972, so it's got a lot of that flavor. You hear music of the era, you see images of the era, and uh, the movie's supposed to be fun. And um, you know, and, and that's and that's kind of the, the bottom line here. And you know, it's um, and I think people need to just take a breath if they have reservations and go see this and just accept it on its terms of being Johnny Depp and Tim Burton giving Dark Shadows an affectionate. Uh, uh, reimagining. Well, and Jim, Wayne we... Smith, who wrote, who wrote the script, um, he, he's not an original fan because he's younger, but uh, his mother was a big fan, and um, so um, you know, there's there's been a lot of good karma with this. Jim, we've and, been we've uh, been getting in yeah. uh, various questions from, of course, Dark Shadows fans, and one of the questions was actually in regards to the music, so that's why I kind of wanted to interject. And they had asked, uh, the film, of course, is supposed to be set in 1972, but a lot of the music such as the Barry White song is from 74, Top of the World is from 73. A lot of it's kind of out of place. Was there any thoughts to that as far as trying to keep the continuity? Well, look, I mean, one can always nitpick um, over, you know, uh, over a minutia such as that. I mean, the, the, the flavor of the early, mid-70s is there. I mean, nobody's going to put on, uh, you know, nobody's going to put on, you know, a song from 1980 in a film about 72, and nobody's going to put on you know, a, a song from 1960 there, you know, but, uh, you know, this film, you know, is set in 1972, um, you know, if you've got a song that's a year or two, you know, ahead of itself, you know, it's not, you know, it, it's still in that milieu, and, uh, you know, I mean, the Carpenters, you know, exploded in 1970, and so, you know, if you've got a, a hit record a year before it was a hit on the charts, you know, it's still, you know, within a reasonable time span, so you're not going to have anything that's 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 out of that's that's you know out of uh, out of pocket here. A lot of the fans want to know too. We know that you were a technical advisor. They want to know how involved you were at advising, and did you advise they go more old school, or were you telling them that you were fine with the new look? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't technical advisor. I've been I've been a consultant, uh, and you know, and, and the and the end of the day is you know. Um, you know, obviously, I'm 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 well versed after working, you know, with Dan Curtis, and and, and now with the estate for over 20 years, and then pulling together, you know, uh, the property for the home videos and and, and 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 all the all the related activities, and we have the great cast reunions, and uh, you know, and, and looking over the property has been an honor, and it's been and it's been you know a lot of challenges, and you know, there's an attempt whether it's the new comic books. Or whether it's the new audio dramas we did with the original cast that are on CD and downloads, or, or you know, the, uh, all these other projects, to, you know, to keep the spirit, to keep the essence of Dark Shadows intact, uh, and, and basically, you know, honor the integrity uh, of, of of that creation. And um, so, this movie again, it's it's a matter of 
um, you know, you're talking about a a, 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 a huge investment by, by Warner Brothers and and, and, and and all the production entities involved with, with Tim Burton and Johnny Depp. Uh, so, you know, you know, I've been involved with you know, uh, like I said, you know, consulting on different aspects of the characters in the show and, and, and things of that nature. And, you know, and decisions are made just like when we did the 1990 series. Uh, I worked on that series with Dan, and, you know, Dan chose to combine some characters. You know, Victoria uh, took on some of the, uh, the attributes that Maggie Evans had had in the original show. We combined the Dr. Woodard and the, and, and the, uh, and the, um, uh, Professor Stokes character into into one character on that show, and we changed some relationships, and uh, you know, so I mean, it, it, it's just every every time you, you you revisit a property like this, there's definitely room for um, you know adjustment. And when you're doing a feature film, you need to streamline it. Um, you know, you can't have all the characters in there. It's just you know, it's too confusing. You've got to stick to some core characters. It's still a pretty darn big cast, you know. Uh, this movie and it's got great performances and, and all and, and the other thing is to do a feature film you know you've got a very sophisticated audience in the year 2012 and again they've been hit over the head with all these Twilight films and True Blood uh, and, and the creator of True Blood Alan, Alan Ball is a, a big oh, he was a Dark Shadows fan and you've had the Vampire Diaries and you've had the Anne Rice uh, efforts and you've had you know so many other different things so you know Dark Shadows may not be as unique as it used to be on one level, but it still is the uh, the original, and it does have elements that, you know, the other shows, some have tried to implement, and, and but there's still um, the story that is unique to Dark Shadows, and, and I would and I would add that with this, uh, this film, you know, you can't just put on the same exact story, and Dan Curtis kind of retold it, the, the, the times we redid it for primetime TV, we did a pilot seven years ago as well that never got broadcast because there was some creative uh, uh, situations that, mm-hmm. that didn't work out. But you know that that implemented some new some new direction as well in the story and making Angelique, of course, um, you know such a uh, a prime uh, presence from the very beginning. But the thing with um, the movie now. You know, the characters, you know, they need to have an edge to them. And if you look back at the old soap opera when it started, and I think this happens with a lot of shows that stay on the air, characters tend to soften because, you know, uh, Elizabeth Collins was a recluse. She was hiding a secret. Roger Collins was not a nice father, not a nice guy at the beginning of the show. Young David Collins was very troubled. Carolyn, the teenage daughter of Elizabeth, was very rebellious. And if you look at Dark Shadows as it went on, all those characters kind of softened. Maggie Evans was a wisecracking waitress, uh, a little bit snarky. You know, she became, you know, everyone became kind of nice and, and softened. Well, this movie kind of goes back to square one, and the characters have edge to it. You know, all the characters in this movie, you know, have a certain uh, uh, you know side of them that is not just uh, surface value, and they've all got issues and problems and in some cases, secrets. Well, let me ask you so, this, Jim, because um, speaking yeah. as a producer, you're a working producer, you've got a lot of credits before even Dark Shadows. You know that in show business, there's got to be business, and you've got to think about how to keep it fresh and how to keep it alive and how to keep it fun for the, the new modern generation. But can you understand some of the flack that's out there or why some of the fans are upset? I mean, you can understand the emotion that's going on, can't you? Well, look, I understand that when, when somebody has grown up with something and they're very nostalgic and it's a piece of whether it's a piece of their childhood or a piece of their, you know, just a piece of their life, uh, and soap operas in particular are very personal to people. And this show goes well beyond being a soap opera, which is, you know, not, you know, a, not a fair title because it's, it's, it's so many different things to so many different people. Sure. And it's very hard to really just describe Dark Shadows in two or three words. And I understand that diehard fans of anything, or uh, and particularly something like Dark Shadows, is very special. And even though it's been a cult and it's been a very, you know, legendary show, it's still been a little more intimate as far as like a Star Trek or a Star Wars or, or some of these other properties that are just so gargantuan in their following. And, and they've also had maybe the benefit of more uh, current, you know, huge projects. I mean, Star Trek's had these massive movies. And, and series remakes and, and, and versions and spin offs over the last, you know, 25, 30 years. And, and it, and it, that's been, that's been a, a one of a kind thing. Dark Shadows has been kind of a, a, a little show that could, and it's been a little more grassroots. And, uh, you know, it was huge in its day, but again, it, it, it's not, 
it's not as, as mainstream. So I understand that, you know, certain diehard fans and old timers, you know, loyalists are going to be maybe a little bit, you know, some, some of them might be concerned or think, oh, this isn't what Grayson Hall would do as Julia or this isn't what Jonathan Fred. And again, I just respectfully suggest to them that they take a breath and, and understand that there's no reason for these people to mimic what came before. Uh, Dan Curtis did it. Uh, many times, and over we did Dark Shadow over a thirty year span. Dan Curtis, you know, revisited Dark Shadows, and now it's somebody else's turn, and it's done with respect, and it's done with affection. There's uh, there's so a lot of fans. I can understand. You know, it's a different it's a different uh, hybrid mm-hmm. is kind of what I call it, and uh, but it's it's a lot of fun. So they it's you know there's room for fun entertainment. Everything doesn't have to be deadly serious. And uh, as I said before. If you look back in the original Dark Shadows, as it progressed, it took on a little more uh, humor uh, as it went on, you know, with Mag of the Gypsy and, uh, and, and, and some of the other, and even Quentin, when he came on, he was very, he could be sarcastic, and, and, and the show did have, have more uh, of that element as it went on the last couple of years it was on the air. I think a lot of the thing that's going on at this point, Jim, and this is what we've been hearing from a lot of listeners and a lot of Dark Shadows fans, is that it's one thing to have it be something different, but a lot of the purists are feeling almost kind of betrayed because of the fact that in interviews leading up to the film's trailer being released, Tim Burton, Johnny Depp, everybody else involved had kind of denied that it was a comedy. Was that because... It was originally going in a different direction, and then it got changed midstream. Or why was no, it no, declined? No, 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 no. I mean, no. The script, the script is what it is. But, but again, you've seen enough of the trailer to see that it's not, it's not a hundred percent a comedy. Uh, no, I mean, there's, there's a lot of comedy in this movie, and uh, but if you, if you can certainly see by the trailer, there's, there's plenty of uh, material as well that is very deep, very gothic, and scary. So I think at the end of the day, it's, it's a hybrid, but it's definitely. Uh, it's definitely filled with humor, and there's definitely a lot of fun moments. So, um, you know, again, I think it's just, uh, you're always going to hear, you know, from people who get uh, concerned. I think there's also plenty of fans out there that understand that this is a way to keep the original show alive and to introduce it to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's like anything in life. You know, you, yeah, people who are a little concerned are going to tend to, you know, uh, uh, express themselves verbally, vocally, whatever, a little stronger than people who were, you know, a little a little less, you know, uh, alarmed or, or people who were just more accepting. But, uh, you know, again, I just respectfully uh, convey to these, to any people who are concerned that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's somebody else's turn to get Dark Shadows uh, an interpretation, and uh, and they've done it with uh, good intentions, and it's a very entertaining movie. And to not go see it, uh, to expect just a, just for it to be the same Dark Shadows, and uh, that's kind of where it's at. Right. Well, Catherine, and, uh, and, and, and you know nobody should take it so personally right. that it's that it, that it offends them because that's not that's not the intent, and it's not the and it's definitely not the execution. But you know the trailer. Definitely gives is a fair representation of the film, and that's why it's out there to give to whet people's appetite. And uh, you know, Johnny Depp has made a big part of his career doing a lot of these larger than life characters. For sure. And um, you know, so and and I think you know it, it's it's fun to see he's a great actor. Michelle Pfeiffer is wonderful as Elizabeth, and um, and of course Helena Bonham Carter is. We all know what a great actress she is, and. You know, and, and Johnny Lee Miller is Roger, and, and, and the kid, uh, the kids are great in the movie. Chloe Moritz, you know, was only 14. She's 14, 15 now. Uh, she was, she was just in Hugo, and she is just such a delightful, talented young actress, just like Nancy Barrett For sure. was such a, was such a strong actress on the show. I mean, I think, you know, Chloe is a wonderful, uh, successor, and then, um, and little, and little Gulliver, uh, Gully, who plays David, he's, he, he's from Australia, as is Bella Heathco. Who plays um, Victoria? So you've got a, you've got not a weak link in the bunch, and uh, so I just would you know just say you know anyone who's overly concerned to just try to lighten up a little bit and accept this for what it is, and it's it's a wonderful new imagining of the Dark Shadows legend. Uh, the original actors again that are involved with are totally happy with it, and I think you know it's just trying to accept. I remember when we did the 1991 series that came on the air. Mm-hmm. And people were even concerned. Oh, Ben Cross is no Jonathan Fred, and right. you know, and that and that was Dan's 
literal, re, you know, retelling, doing the exact same Dark Shadows, but on a prime time budget. Um, so, you know, I think it just, it always takes, you know, original fans, you know, feel that sense of loyalty, and that's wonderful. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I think at the same time, it's just a matter of just also uh, keeping your mind open to the fact that, you know, okay, clearly Jonathan Fred's not going to play Barnabas again, and uh, Dan Curtis is not going to do Dark Shadows again, and and the world has changed a lot, and this is a way to to make it uh, uh, work for a lot of people on a different level, and and it doesn't take away from the old show and or the movies uh, that happened 40 years ago, which were still restoring the Night of Dark Shadows film, and uh, for DVD, those will be out next year, and the 1991 series is out there for people to enjoy as well, sure. and. Uh, so, you know, there's enough Dark Shadows to go around. Well, that's and, for, that's for sure, Jim. Know? Let me ask you one more thing about the movie, then I want you to promote the new stuff so we can get you out of your house there on time. <laughs> uh, you are definitely doing good work in the fact that whether you like the new movie or you don't, you have done so much for Dark Shadows, and, and I'm proud to be a friend of yours. And I'll, I'll go online by saying that. I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, you were first introduced to me by Catherine Lee Scott, who called you the super fan of Dark Shadows. I just want to know, with you working as you did in your capacity with the film. Are you satisfied with your capacity with the film? Are you satisfied with everything that was done? And is there anything that you would have changed if you would have had the power to? You know what? I'm really not one to uh, uh, complain, unless, you know, unless there was something really serious to complain about. And, you know, seeing uh, the way this uh, this new film has been put together with, with people who care about it, um, you know, um, yeah, I had no idea when, when we first you know, uh, got this thing going six years ago. You know what direction we'd go in, and uh, and, and 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 meeting with the uh, you know uh, the challenge ahead, and uh, you know b you know with with, uh, with John August and with Seth putting the story together, and then Seth doing the script. It's been a real uh, wonderful odyssey, and and again, and I think coming up with this hybrid, everyone figured that this was the best route. Uh, to, to cover it, and I don't have uh, any, you know, any regrets at this point. I mean, my only regret really would be that we couldn't get all the, the all the original Dark Shadows actors in, in this movie. You know, it was shot in England. Uh, the movie was shot overseas, and you know, so it just wasn't physically, uh, geographically possible to get everyone over there. I mean, you know, because these actors from the original series. You know, it's yeah. It's been forty six years since the show went on the air right. in sixty six, and, and we've lost a lot of the performers. Um, but you know, that were older, and, and and otherwise just the tolls that life brings. But um, you know, getting Jonathan, Laura, and David, and Catherine over was just you know a, a really uh, well deserved honor. And you know, I'm just sorry that you know we couldn't have gotten you know the rest of the gang over there. Um, so that would be my only regret. Um, you know, because the Dark Shadows family is very loyal and, and very unique and uh, very extended. Uh, so, you know, but, uh, you know, so that, that's just, you know, not everything can go perfect. But uh, I think, you know, under the circumstances, you know, fans should hopefully get uh, a good pleasure out of seeing uh, the cameos with, um, with uh, the four of them that we got there. And, uh, you know, and I think it's a wonderful time for Dark Shadows fans to rejoice that their little show is going to be getting all this, and it's already started, getting all this wonderful tension and rediscovery. Because this is what happened on a smaller level when we did the 1991 show. Because um, I worked on that series, and, and we just launched the videotapes of the old show at the time, and the Sci-Fi Channel had not yet started re the show. And, and it, it was a huge boost to the original show, and, and it reminds people who watched it all those years ago or in reruns or the Sci-Fi Channel, you know, that the show is there. And uh, and it just makes it more valid and 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 and, and more uh, you know more visible. So uh, there's definitely nothing to to regret. And uh, you know, other than too, I'm sorry that Dan's not around. Dan Curtis, uh, the movie is dedicated to him, and uh, and his name is up there on the big screen. You know, as the creator, and uh, and that's who it should be. And his two daughters um, are, are very supportive of the film. And that's another thing that's important to point out. And uh, Everybody's looking forward to May 11th, and uh, and there'll be a lot of fun stuff. In the meantime, too, leading up, you know, the, the trailers now in movie theaters this weekend. Well, I, I think probably I'm safe in saying that if I don't want to put words in your mouth, correct me if I'm <coughs> wrong, but probably the one thing you would like to say to diehard fans is at least give the movie a chance. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, and, and again, and, and I don't and I don't think it should be 
um, like I said, misconstrued that all these diehard fans are up in arms. I mean, yeah, there's definitely some fans that are concerned, and 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 and, and, and everyone's got their own threshold of sensitivity. So it's not they're not being right or wrong; they're just being themselves. It's totally whatever your emotions are, they're totally valid. Yeah. And I'm just suggesting, you know, the ones that might be concerned, or even the few that might be, you know, you know, wildly objecting, uh, you know, objecting to this, you know, they definitely need to understand that, you know, this is all. Everything's been sanctioned here. Everything's been done with loving care, and uh, and and it's yeah, it's, it's a new hybrid. As I, I kind of use that word a lot, but it's like I said, the trailer shows you that, and uh, you know, it's 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 not it's not a uh, there's nothing dismissive about this. It's it's, it's all embracing, and uh, you know, uh, the, the spirit of Dan Curtis, the spirit of Jonathan. I mean, Jonathan Fritt is still with us, but you know, it's. It's all there, right. and uh, that's why the whole thing got done in the first place. Okay, and, now uh, I want to give you know. a chance now, and I don't want to cut you off. I'm just being conscious of you having somewhere to go. <laughs> uh, you guys are actually doing something pretty cool in the fact that you're giving the fans a chance to see the film before the general public. Well, um, yeah, the the, uh, the day before the film's open, the night before on Thursday, um, uh, it's Thursday, May the tenth, in Hollywood at the Vista, the historic Vista Theater in Los Feliz, um, which is run by um, a great guy named Lance, uh, who's who's restored that theater. It's got an Egyptian motif, but not don't confuse it with the Egyptian theater. But the Vista it has been a great uh, venue um, with dark shadows over the years. We've had. Uh, anniversary screenings of the House of Dark Shadows and Night of Dark Shadows films, and they put uh, we put the actors' um, hand handprints and signatures and cement out front. And uh, but anyway, we're we're going to have a screening of the new movie the night before it opens. Uh, it'll be Thursday, May the tenth, and also show the original House of Dark Shadows movie um, on the big screen. So it'll, it'll be all glorious, uh, you know, uh, full Night of Dark Shadows. Uh, movies, so to speak, and then and uh, a lot of the original actors will be there to celebrate as well. Um, Captain Lee Scott, uh, Laura Parker, Nancy Barrett, uh, Jim Storm, Jerry Lacey, Chris Pinnock, Lisa Richards, they were all in uh, the House of Dark Shadows movie. Uh, Chris was in Night of Dark Shadows, and then some of them were in, uh, Laura was in Night of Dark Shadows, and Nancy was in the But anyway, so all those actors will be there to enjoy a new movie and to greet with the fans. Um, and just have a great kind of special party, and uh, so you can find out more about that by going to um, going online to uh, you know Collinwood.net or DarkShadowsFestival.com, and um, uh, you have to get tickets you know through the mail for that, and uh, and then we're going to have one other uh, get together for the fans this summer in the New York area the last weekend in July, uh, where Jonathan Fred and and some others will be getting together. Uh, with the fans, that's the weekend of July 28th uh, in the New York area, and uh, the details of that will be available um, uh, later this month. But uh, in the meantime, uh, we've got, um, like I said, a new movie coming and this and this movie night, and uh, and all these other things happening right now. That we've got the the, the book, you know, the too. book uh, yeah. you know, the book with Catherine, the um, Return to Collinwood, that um, is, is this great kind of coffee table. Sort of photo anthology book. It covers, um, you know, Dark Shadows from '66 to the present movie, and we've got some great photos, you know, from all the all the versions, and then and then stories from Catherine and Laura and, and Jonathan Fred and and uh, and everybody uh, has chipped in for this book. And then we've got Laura's new novels, um, her new novels, excuse me, uh, coming out later in the year. But she's reprinting Angelique's Descent with a new chapter oh. that's out next month. And you um, you've actually signed one of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer actors to do some of the uh, audio dramas, right? Well, these audio dramas we're doing with Big Finish that uh, um, employ the original actors. In fact, David Selby's recording one tomorrow uh, here in L.A. Um, and uh, yeah, we've had all these. Uh, Jonathan Frid did one as Barnabas last year for us, and we've gotten all the uh, you know all the players together, and they're just like these old radio shows, and you can get them on CD from Big Finish. Uh, dot com or downloads on the internet and uh, um, they're, they're great fun and we've also had actors yes from from the other versions of Dark Shadows Barbara Steele and Roy Finnis and uh, Lisette Anthony from the 91 Dark Shadows have been involved and, and Alec Newman who played Barnabas in the uh, 
the uh, the pilot of Dark Shadows from 2004, oh. and, um, and 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 yes, some other some other genre actors uh, from uh, Doctor Who as well as uh, Buffy and some and some other uh, programs have have lent their talents. And, so and the big exciting news. From MPI, they're releasing the entire original series in a box set that <laughs> yes. looks like a coffin. Well, um, yeah, I mean, this has been a good opportunity to to repackage the original series episodes. There's 1,225 half hours, and we did all these bonus interviews. You know, I tried to get anyone who ever acted or done um, production work on the original series on camera to talk about it. So, you know, there's well over 100 um, interviews with, you know. Um, all these, all these great people talking about, and a lot of them are unfortunately gone now since we taped these things, but those are included in, in, in the blooper reel and, and the documentary I've done years ago and, and other fun things. Um, that's all put together now in a coffin, uh, coffin box, um, and uh, you can squeeze all these into, you know, a little box instead of, you know, all the, uh, the huge cases over the years. But we're also repackaging each uh, each volume of four DVDs into new sleeves with new artwork that are they're thinner, so they're about half the size of the old ones. So if you don't do the coffin box, you can also get the individual volumes, you know, in a new packaging that's that's much less storage space, and 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 they've also reduced the price. You know, it's just the new world order, and it's it's, it's nice for collectors and for new fans. And so NPI is putting all that out. Um, you know, in, in the next uh, month or two. So, is there any, is there uh, any yeah. chance that we're going to see uh, some of the the new cast? Is Johnny Depp going to be at a Dark Shadows festival near you someday? You think? Well, Johnny Johnny's a great guy. He's a big fan. He's you know the, the one thing with Johnny is he's also a workaholic. He's he's down in New Mexico filming the Lone Ranger right now, um, and and you know the guy is just never never stops for a breath hardly. But uh, you know you know hopefully one of these days we'll. Uh, We'll, we'll see him because he uh, he enjoys uh, you know enjoys doing these things and he's uh, um, he's just a real fan you know and uh, so uh, um, and and just having a lot of fun so that you know hopefully something will work out and uh, you will be seeing some publicity coming up you know for the next two months leading up and he'll definitely be doing some media uh, some television uh, publicity and, and and some of the other cast members will be showing up too. Um, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer watched the show originally as well, you know, and, uh, it's, so there's some, most of the cast though is, is, you know, from this movie, mm-hmm. other than uh, Johnny and Michelle, you know, most of them are, um, you know, British or Australian or right. Ava Green who plays Angela, she's French, but she totally uh, obliterates the, her accent, so you won't hear it in the movie at all. She, she's really? been a Bond, a James Bond uh, girl in the past, but, um, so, uh, and Nancy yeah, Barrett, Nancy Barrett yeah. really didn't mind that that her character suddenly became fourteen, right, or fifteen. <laughs> well, you know, Nancy Nancy Barrett was, you know, she you know she was a teenager at the time on the show. You know, she was she was supposed to be around seventeen or eighteen. So, you know, it's just, of course, now uh, kids often look younger. Even although in Chloe Chloe's case, I just saw she, she was on Thirty Rock the other day, and she plays a very, I mean, she she plays a very mean adult, even though she's only fifteen. I mean, she's like. 15 going on, you know, 45 as far as <laughs> she's awesome. her maturity and the, and the way she carries herself. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, a very mature for her age for sure. and uh, all that. Yeah. Well, I want to let you know. So, we we got to let you go. Right, and thank, you. Yeah, wanna... thank you for uh, thank you for your time. And uh, and like I said, this movie's going to be a lot of fun. And I think you know people have to understand not to uh, not to misinterpret the intentions here because uh, you know amping up the humor. Is is meant uh, in a uh, in a very affectionate way here, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's got a lot of serious heart and uh, and poignant moments and and the gothic romance and some scary stuff in it, and and so this movie's got something for everybody, and that's really the whole idea. Well, and, I uh, I thank you, Jim, and I thank you especially for for trusting us to do this. Because, you know, whether you need it to be or not, you're still very fearless for coming on like you did, and I appreciate you trusting us and in, in getting the word across. You know we'll always be here to promote Dark Shadows and whatever, whatever guys. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Have a nice night. Yeah. Bye.